Aloha, everyone. This is our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for August 22nd, 2024. Kilauea just had another intrusion that occurred near Pauahi Crater in the Upper East Rift Zone that occurred in the early hours of August 20th. And that followed a whole series of earthquakes that had also been occurring in that other Upper East Rift Zone as well. That's just the latest development in a series of events because previous to this intrusion, the USGS released this image, which is a ground radar change measurement showing inflation that was happening up to the day before that, right adjacent to Pu'o'o off to the side here. As well, there's inflation south of Kalua Pele, the main summit caldera. And one thing we heard the USGS describe is that the symmetrical and round in nature of these signals suggest that this inflation is from a magma body that's at a moderate depth down, unlike the one we just saw that was near the surface, which produced more of this rainbow pattern and butterfly pattern there. So this is where we had inflation just at the start of the week before the intrusion. But prior to that, from last week, you might recall that we had an intrusion or an inflationary center near Nepal Crater and prior to that, we had the intrusion just one month ago today on July 22nd over at Mauna Ulu, and that was right in here. So we actually had an first an intrusion into this Mauna Ulu area, and then over the next week and a half or so, moved over to Nepal Crater. Over that following next couple of weeks, migrated further over to Puo'o, and in the meantime, pressure returned to the summit crater, and that seems to have re-injected another intrusion and perhaps beginning the process once again. So this is the zoomed in version of the most recent intrusion. And there you can see that butterfly pattern right next to Pauahi crater, just slightly to the north and west of the previous center, which is showing here as slightly deflating by Mauna Ulu. The south flank of Kilauea is still moving quite fast. This is a Kalapana Trail GPS station for the last two years. This north-south component is showing a, a faster southern motion at, at first, but still continuing at an unchanged rate here in the last couple of weeks at Kalapana Trail. This means that the rift zone is then able to open further and facilitate that filling of the rift zone from magma that's coming from the summit to this east rift zone injection site occasionally rounding that corner. And then once it rounds the corner, it's propagating to all those different reservoirs. So Kalapana Trail is moving to the south. And at Puo'o itself, we're seeing effects of it getting pushed to the north and to the east, while also getting uplifted from the side from that deep magma inflation. Uh, this is one station on the north of the rift zone. If we look at the station just to the south of that at Jacuzzi, it's showing the same signals also northeast and up. So there, everything is moving together in a pool area. And it's not that pool itself is reinflating. It's that uh, an area deep and slightly off to the side from it. But it has reached that area. If we look at the tilt meter at pool, it registered this signal uh, a couple weeks ago, where it first showed the onset of inflation from the west and has since stabilized until this most recent intrusion, what we saw in the last couple of days right here. Otherwise, that eastern reservoir pool does appear fairly stable, and perhaps this that pulse that went around a corner um, has has uh, stabilized. The escape road, however, uh, just off the left side of the graph here, are, are the last couple of pulses of the July twenty second to twenty fifth intrusion. It has been going through very steady deflation until we had this intrusionary signal that occurred here in the early hours of the 20th. Since then, you can see that it also has stabilized and is no longer moving in an inflationary pattern. So moving back towards the summit, the last piece of this is that at the summit stations at Halimaumau and on the South Caldera, we saw deflation. So magma was leaving that summit area to feed that upper east rift intrusion and that kind of ties together the story of what's happened on Kilauea over the past week and a half or so. Looking at the usual plots that we have that we examine, these are the earthquake rates and depths for the past month. So here is that spike of earthquakes that accompanied the intrusion on the 20th. 
And since then, we've come back down. And prior to that, we were also fairly level, low levels compared to the month prior. On a map, we can see that cluster at the Upper East Rift and a little bit under the South Caldera, a little bit more dispersed on the Middle East Rift zone as that deep magma is pushing to the sides rather than pushing its way upwards towards the surface. We also see here on this map this 4.7 magnitude earthquake on the south flank, just adjacent to this zone of intrusion. So as the south flank continues to move seaward and magma continues to inject the Middle East Rift Zone, uh, we're seeing movement of the flank and occasional earthquakes such as this 4.7 right here. So this pattern is likely to continue because the pathway just continues to open with more magma and more flank movement here. So that's the wrap on Kilauea. Quickly on Mauna Loa, earthquake rates are low. There are earthquakes per week over the last year. So quite low since the deep events under the summit back in late 2023. And we continue to have long-term slow inflation on Mauna Loa with the two sides of the summit caldera continuing to move further apart, distance increasing on the graph here. Perhaps there's some slight adjustments, some little wiggles like you see here in the past from adjustments and influence of Kilauea's movements, but nothing major in the grand scheme of things atop this long-term inflation. And that's our Hawaiian Book in the Summary for today. Mahalo.